The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good morning. This is Marcus Solar at Insurance Agency Marketing Services. I'm taking the place of uh, Mark Raymakers this morning. He got called off to a meeting. I uh, want to thank you all for taking some time to join us this morning. Uh, we have Kip Walker on the uh, line with us from Mutual Trust this morning as well. I uh, want to take just a few moments and just kind of share with you a little about uh, insurance agency marketing. And then we'll go all get into the uh, reason we're here this morning. Uh, but also just want to say thank you once again for taking time in uh, joining us uh, here uh, with Insurance Agency Marketing this morning. This webinar is going to be recorded, so if you do uh, miss a portion of it, uh, uh, please let us know. Uh, and feel free to ask questions as we go through. It is probably going to be a longer webinar this morning. We will be covering a lot of material. Uh, you can type in your questions as we go, and like I said, we will try to answer those as we go. We also will have an open uh, question form at the end, uh, and uh, we will try to answer as many questions as, as we go along. Either myself or Kip will try to answer those uh, as we go through. So let's go ahead and get started. We have a lot of information to cover. Again, my name is Marcus. I will be following up with each and every one of you this morning after the webinar. Uh, to possibly answer any additional questions or help you out with uh, uh, case design uh, for any clients or prospects that might come to mind that might be a good fit for the solutions that we talked about this morning uh, or any additional questions on insurance agency marketing that might come up. So uh, let's go ahead and get started. Insurance agency marketing has been in business now for 30 years. We do offer our Life and Annuity Academy training. Uh, this is an industry recognized training course. It is a two-day training course that takes place uh, in uh, Des Moines, Iowa. Uh, we do uh, cover uh, sales ideas and strategies from four of our top producers that are in attendance at that meeting. Uh, they do have breakout uh, sessions where they do share what is working for them, what's not working for them. It is a way to help our producers uh, leapfrog their business uh, so they don't make the same mistakes along the way. Uh, they do share uh, index annuities. Uh, top annuity industry uh, threats and trends. Uh, we do walk through large life case marketing tools and concepts. We walk through industry best income riders, uh, wealth transfer tools, advanced annuity sales topics, and sales uh, software tools, needs-based annuity uh, sales strategies. Uh, this uh, two-day uh, uh, training course is something that is uh, covered not only with insurance agency marketing, uh, but one of our top carriers as well. Uh, so it is, uh, there is no out of cost for our advisors. Our next meeting is going to be uh, first quarter of 2017. We don't have a date as of yet, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a question out there. If you are interested in getting more information on this two day training, uh, course, uh, which is industry recognized. Typically, we have two to three hundred people that are interested in attaining. Uh, we do uh, take uh, between 40 and 50 people per uh, class or per event. Uh, and again, it is going to be the first quarter of 2017. Uh, it is uh, going to be in uh, Des Moines uh, for the first quarter. Uh, please let us know if you have some interest in attending. Uh, I'm going to leave that poll open for a few more moments so everyone can answer. But there is going to be no topic that will not be unturned or covered in that meeting. And it's a good opportunity to meet and rub elbows with the best of the best uh, within the industry. So I do appreciate it. I'm going to go ahead and close that poll out. I certainly do appreciate you taking time to answer that. Uh, and I will follow up with some additional uh, information for those interested in attending that event. We do offer creative services here at Insurance Agency Marketing Services. Uh, this is er everything and anything from logo uh, to start, uh, starting letterhead, uh, newsletter service, website, newspaper ads, TV, and radio. Depending and no matter where you are within your practice, it is a way for us to say thank you for a great partnership a way for us to help promote your business within your own community, a way to uh, uh, differentiate you in your community uh, away from your competition. Uh, and it is uh, run by an individual in our office 
His name is Matt Neal. He runs that department, does a wonderful job. He is uh, in charge of our creative services department. Uh, so no matter where you are, like I said, within uh, your business, it is a way for us to uh, say thank you uh, for a great ongoing uh, partnership. And how can we help you expand and grow your business over many years to come? We also have the new producer bonus program. This is good for uh, the first six months for new producers that come on board with insurance agency marketing services. We have everything from 100,000 in a premium, whether that's single premium life business or annuity business. Uh, if you uh, submit and have paid 100,000 in premium, you qualify for $750 in cash bonus back. Uh, 300,000, it's a $1,500 gift card or full social security program and 3,000 piece postcard mailer, all the way to the $500,000 level, which is a Ritz Carlton rewards make your own personal getaway or a 5,000 piece uh, seminar coaching uh, with either Matt Gill or 4,000 piece mail mailer or seminar coaching with another one of our top producers, Dave Pimper. So an excellent uh, opportunity. Uh, either to promote your business, a way for us to say thank you, and we look forward for uh, many years to come and a great partnership uh, with new producers coming on board with Insurance Agency Marketing Services. We also have uh, Easy Money Now, uh, our referred uh, producer program and marketing reimbursement accounts. Uh, we do realize here at Insurance Agency Marketing, it is very, very expensive for advisors to run their own a business so we want to try to help with those expenditures and we do appreciate uh, refers referrals uh, to insurance agency marketing services so how can we help you out with that uh, you get fifty dollars when you referral contracts with us when your referral does your does their first piece of business with us you get a hundred dollars and when your referral continues to write with us you get 20 basis points on every uh, amount of business or any business they write thereafter. So if your referral does a million dollars and you have three of those referrals, you get 6,000 and in the pocket or cash to you, uh, say over the next year. What some of my producers do is they take that money and they put that or reinvest that back into their practice towards marketing uh, for, the, uh, for the next year. It's a way for them to offset those expenditures. Another way we do that is through marketing reimbursement. We put $200 into your marketing reimbursement account for every 100,000 in premium uh, that you write through our office. Another way that we can help, help you offset any expenditures that you have within your business. So I'm gonna go ahead at this point in time and go ahead and turn it over to uh, Mr. Kip Walker uh, through Mutual Trust. Uh, and uh, let him uh, take it over at this point in time. Thank you very much, Marcus. I appreciate that. I appreciate being here with um, Insurance Agency Marketing Services, and um, you guys do a lot of great work in training and support, and uh, that really is uh, very important these days when a lot of the carriers are getting away from from that, uh, that training and support as we've gone through the independent agent model. And uh, Mutual Trust also believes in, in supporting and training in new areas and finding new ways for advisors to set themselves apart and um, have something to say. Uh, we, we sell by, uh, by what we know and, and how well we can communicate it. And so it's very important that we uh, help advisors to learn these new, these new ways of uh, communicating and the new ideas. And so, Today, this is going to be more of a product-focused um, discussion. We generally do like to do sales presentations, but we're very excited about our new um, product that we have. It's called the Horizon Value, and I just want to make sure everyone should be able to see my screen right now. It should say Horizon Value. Marcus, do you know if that's the case? Yeah, yeah, I can see that. Okay, okay, great. All right, so... Um, we're going to go through the horizon value. I'll go through this fairly quickly. I want to be respectful of your time. We'll take a look at what has been going on with mutual trust and the exciting changes that are occurring. Uh, we are a company on the rise. We're also back in the manufacturing business. 
Uh, we'll discuss the Horizon Value as part of that new manufacturing initiative. And we'll take a look at the Flex Paid Up Editions Rider, and then um, we'll just ask you to take uh, the next step. So just to give everybody an update, in November of last year, November 2nd, we merged with Pan American. We announced that merger on November 2nd, and then Fitch on November 3rd contacts Mutual Trust and tells us that they're going to give us an A rating. Fitch is, works with Pan American, and they have an A rating for Pan American, but we, Mutual Trust, had never worked with them before. So they just contacted us out of the blue. They saw the value in the merger, and we got an A rating from Fitch. Um, we've always had an A- minus from AM Best, and they had always told us that we were too small and that we would never be an A company. We had six times the capital we needed. We had um, you know, excellent sales, and they loved our product lineup, but they just said we were too small. So when we were contacted on November 4th by AM Best, they did reaffirm our A minus rating, but they gave us a positive outlook. And just recently, a couple weeks ago, they did move us up to that A rating. Um, Mutual Trust announced on November 17th that we were going to increase our dividend scale. So now this isn't just an increase in the dividends that we pay out, because all carriers increase their dividend payout as their book of business matures. This is an actual increase to our scale and that's the basis for all future dividend payouts. So while every other company was holding steady or decreasing their dividends last year, Mutual Trust was the only company that we're aware of that actually increased that dividend scale. So you can see we had a lot of wins right out of the gate from that merger with Pan American. So ratings are no longer a concern for us. We have um, a ratings from AM, an A rating from AM Best and an A rating from Fitch. We moved our investment management to Pan American. This was one of the big wins that went along with this merger. Pan American has a fantastic investment division. They're able to get about 200 basis points more in returns on new money than Mutual Trust was able to get with our investment arm. And we were using an outside, an outside investment uh, asset management firm called Guggenheim. And uh, they're just not as nimble as Pan American can be. And Pan American has access to other investment opportunities since they do a lot of business outside the country. They're very popular in Central and South America. And those countries require investment in those countries. And they also happen to pay a higher rate of return. In, in, uh, where there's many opportunities to, re to get higher rates of return in those countries. Um, so that along with their, their nimbleness and the, the head of the asset management division there, the investment division there is um, Randy, and Randy does a fantastic job. And so as a result, you know, we were getting 3.8 uh, on new money. They're getting 5.6 plus. And life insurance business, that's huge. Those 200 basis points are huge. So we were able to get better rates of return on our money out of this merger. We also have been able to revive our manufacturing engine. And we were able to do that for two reasons. We implemented a new life insurance administration system called ALICE. And that really brought us firmly from the 1970s into the solid 1990s as far as uh, technology goes. But it's probably a little younger than that. But um, yeah, we did have a, a software administration or a life insurance administration uh, system that was 30 years old. And so if you can imagine uh, any software lasting that long. Um, it's really a testament to the software, but used way past its prime. But we have, we've completed implementing Alice, and this allows us, this new system allows us to divide, develop and put into place a new product every six months. So that's, that's what we're going to be doing. We're going to be coming up with something new every six months, and we'll take a look at that. Um, we're also, we also have new opportunities with Pan American and their international life and U.S. group. They have a fantastic uh, product for foreign nationals. So if any of you are doing business with foreign nationals, uh, let Marcus know, let Mark Raymakers know, or, or somebody at, uh, uh, at IAMS, and I can make sure that they get in touch with you to discuss those opportunities. They also have a fantastic domestic group um, business, and they have a ACA-compliant uh, product for group that is actually affordable and will and is and allows the uh, the client to 
use their life insurance without going bankrupt. So it's really low cost and it's compliant. They actually developed this program right or this uh, product right after ACA and they kind of kept it under the radar uh, to make sure everything was going well and then it just took off once it hit the uh, front page of the Wall Street Journal. So I mean it's, it's a fantastic product. So if you're interested in any of those types of businesses, please, uh, please let us know. So we're back in the manufacturing business. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, what we wanted to do initially was to um, make sure that we did this the right way. So we reached out to advisors for feedback. And the input that, the input that we received from our advisors was first do no harm. And so we stuck to that. We didn't do anything that would harm commissions or increase premiums or anything of that nature. We just wanted to do what was best for the client and for the advisor. Um, as I mentioned before, our plan is to have a new product out every six months. That may not be a product, it might be in a, a writer or something new to discuss every six months. And we're gonna improve our competitiveness of what we already have, um, making improvements to existing products, but we're also going to look to new markets. We've always been very focused on high early cash value and access to those cash values. Um, but now we're in a position with our, our new merger and, and substantial financial backing to be able to look to those new markets, those new areas of focus, uh, still for participating whole life. We're not going to become a, a UL shop where our focus is whole life, but we're going to be able to look at other areas where whole life can um, be designed to accomplish a particular goal for the client. And uh, so we're very excited about that. So our first step was to make some improvements to our existing product covenant too. And initially, this was a couple months, a few months ago, we did that. We added a preferred plus non-tobacco risk class um, right on top of the preferred non-tobacco. We made it possible to get a preferred risk class rating for face amounts under $100,000. So we lowered that a little bit. And it has to do with using a paid up additions rider on top of the base to achieve that full $100,000. So it's not a, it's kind of a moving target as far as how much PUA rider you use. And um, the paid up additions rider, again, that's just that rider that uh, allows you to um, really juice up that cash value in the contract without sacrificing the guarantees. We also reduced the minimum face amount down to 10,000 for ages 40 and up. Uh, the reason we did that was, it seems like we're going in the wrong direction there, but the reason we did that was because we have uh, top producers with our company that do college planning. And for college planners, you know that a low base uh, policy uh, premium you built with a large paid up additions rider can provide a lot of advantages for liquidity that college planners need. And um, so that's why we did that. <clears throat> Step two was to develop our new product. We came up with the name Horizon Value because we wanted to start fresh. Uh, you know, there's gonna be a whole series of products with the Horizon name. This first product is called Horizon Value and we, we kept, again, what was already working. This is basically, I can give you a quick thumbnail of what this product is. It is the Covenant 2 guarantees with substantially enhanced dividend and improvements to the paid-up additions rider, okay? So our guaranteed cash values are still the best in the business. There's no increase to, pr to premiums to subsidize those dividends. You know, there's more than one way to increase those dividends, and one of them is to jack up the premium. We didn't do that. The cost is the same. And we maintain the flexibility of our paid up additions rider and, and actually increase the length of time you can pay into it, as, as you'll see. So what we did was essentially let those higher investment rates of return flow through to this new product and take full advantage of those extra 200 basis points. And that rising ship will lift all boats. It'll be good for the advisor. It'll be good for the client. It'll be good for mutual trust. So it's a win-win-win. So taking a look at the horizon value guaranteed values, you can see that we, um, relative to our primary competitors here that we have up Lafayette Life, Penn Mutual, and Ohio National, the first five years it was never any competition for us. That was, that was where our strength lied and in individuals who wanted to start using those cash values right away and wanted to see them early on. And so you can see, you know, obviously our guarantees are far and above those of Lafayette Life, Penn Mutual, and Ohio National in the first five years. Um, but um, we wanted to 
make sure that we maintain those strong guarantees. So again, we just used the guarantees from the covenant too. We didn't increase the dividends to, um, sorry, I went backwards there. We didn't increase the dividends to, to uh, increase the cash value uh, or take a hit on the commission for the advisor to get these better dividends. And so here are the increased dividend scale. And the, the uh, again, the first bar is mutual trust, and then the next three are our competitors. And the green on top are the dividends. So as you can see now, going through year 10, we are still number one. We're just a little bit ahead in, in year 10 um, of Penn Mutual there. And so still number one all the way through 10 years on our cash value. And you can see through year six, if you look at our guarantees, that first blue bar, even with the dividends added on top of the guarantees of the other competitors, we're still higher in cash value. So that just shows the strength of our guarantees in the early years. So year, through year 10 now, though, we've continued to keep up, and this is where we would start to fall behind, is year 8, 9, 10. Now you can see we're right up there, a little bit ahead of Penn Mutual or Tide, and ahead of everybody else. So we significantly improved the dividend scale. We made enhancements to our flexible paid up additions rider, which we'll talk about. Something else we did was to, sorry about that. Something else we did was to uh, remove our $50,000 band and add a $1 million price, bank, uh, price band. And we did that because a, some of our advisors told us we were being taken out of consideration for larger cases because we didn't have a $1 million band. So we eliminated the $50,000 band and added that $1 million band. And we also, as I've mentioned, maintained all the commission levels. So it's still very strong commission schedule. So that means we're back in the game as far as cash values go, even in the later years. And this is, again, looking at now the Covenant 2, our initial old, or the older product now, versus the horizon value. That's the next product, the darker blue bar. And then our competitors after that, Lafayette Life, Penn Mutual, and Ohio National. So you can see year five, mutual trust is still ahead as far as cash values are concerned. Year 10, we are, with dividends in place there, we are number two. Uh, Penn Mutual, I guess we're a tiny bit behind Penn Mutual, so we're solidly right there. Um, second place in year 10. Year 15, with dividends included, Mutual Trust is third and closely behind Penn Mutual and, um, and Ohio National. And then by year 20, we're tied with Lafayette Life for cash value, and we're all closely behind um, Ohio National and um, Penn Mutual. So there's about a $6,000, $5,000 difference there in year, by year 20 and we still maintain those strong early guaranteed cash values. Um, but, and the 20 years out projections are, you know, they can, they can vary quite significantly when you're looking at the dividend portion. So we're very excited about the new strength in our, in our cash value overall. We're right up there with our competitors, but we still maintain a greater deal of flexibility than our competitors. And we can take a look at this from Another angle, and it looks even better when you look at the premium for a given face amount, you can see here that Ohio National, Penn Mutual, and Mutual Trust are all pretty much in the same ballpark. Lafayette Life has a $152 higher premium for a given face amount than Mutual Trust. And if you look at that over 20 years, that translates into about a 50 basis point hit to their internal rate of return on the cash value for Lafayette Life. So even though the cash values are the same in year 20, our actual internal rate of return will be higher because of their higher premium. So even from a premium perspective, very strong um, results, and, and now we're able to walk into uh, a meeting and not be embarrassed about our year 20 values, which is very refreshing, I can tell you. <laughs> So taking a look at our paid up additions riders, we did increase the dividends on those as well. And our flex paid up additions rider payment period was extended to age 90. It was to age 75, but we had heard from, the, from our advisors that they want to have the opportunity to 
fund it for a longer period of time, one of the main, one of the big reasons was RMDs. Um, those RMDs that were going to be hitting at 70 and a half were, were needed to go somewhere, and the paid up additions rider was a great place to be able to put those RMDs. So we didn't change the PUA rider load. Um, we had had requests to look at that, and we did. And as you'll see, we're very competitive there. And we didn't do anything to diminish our premium flexibility. That was left the same and it's incredibly flexible. So here's a look at the comparison of our paid up additions riders compared to Lafayette Life, Ohio National, and Penn Mutual. Our PUA rider load is 6%, which is among the lowest in the industry matching Lafayette Life. Um, you know, Ohio National is 8% and Penn Mutual is 10%. Our premium can be paid up to age 90, which is among the longest now in the industry. Uh, Lafayette Life has a different way of doing it. It just kind of matches whatever their uh, base policy payment period is. And then Ohio National, it's paid, payable to age 85. Penn Mutual goes all the way out to age 100. Our maximum annual premium is $100,000, and that hasn't changed. It's the same for Lafayette Life. Ohio National is a little more limited. They're four times the base premium, which if you're trying to do a um, some of the extreme designs that we allow clients to do, like uh, non-MEC policies that can be made, paid up with two payments and still be a non-modified endowment contract, uh, which is something that many advisors and clients aren't even aware we can do or that anybody can do. Um, so you can't really do that with, uh, or it'd be much more difficult to do that, I should say, with a Ohio National paid up additions rider uh, while they're limiting that base premium uh, or that PUA rider to four times the base premium. And then Penn Mutual, we're not sure about their flex PUA rider maximum, so we'll just assume it's, ours is better because it's our presentation. So, um, premiums can be paid anytime during the year. It's very flexible. You, you can have a monthly schedule for your base or an annual schedule, it doesn't matter. You can pay your paid up additions rider anytime. And the maximum premium is underwritten right up front. We don't have, you don't have to worry about um, having to go through re uh, underwriting again as some carriers require. After eight years, you may have to go through underwriting again. Or underwriting again. We don't do that. Uh, you just get underwritten one time and you can apply for increases later if your financial scenario changed. But at the time you apply, we're gonna underwrite for your, your uh, um, financial situation at that point in time and, and then you just can pay up to that maximum anytime you want uh, as long as you pay the $100 minimum premium that's all you need to do to keep that paid up additions rider active to age 9. Premiums don't change based on recent contributions and, and, and they're not uh, affected by the client's age so if you're older you don't have to have a higher minimum requirement or anything like that. What you're going to have is for a given premium amount, you're just going to have a lower face amount that it buys. That's how that works. Um, when you put in 100 bucks, for example, you're going to see about $95, $96 showing up in the cash value by the end of the year. Uh, so very cash rich. And then that paid up additions writer earns a 4% guaranteed rate of return on the cash value in there plus a non-guaranteed dividend. Paid up additions rider is also protected or has the uh, ability to be protected by a disability benefit rider. Now you can think of this as, if, if you're familiar with the UL world, as a waiver of cost rider, where it just covers the cost of coming out of the contract. But this is even better because what it does is it puts premium dollars into the paid up additions rider. So it not only covers the cost, but it actually funds the premium that you are qualified for, or approved for up to a maximum of $15,000 per, per year. So you can almost think of this disability benefit rider as retirement supplement insurance uh, because it will make those payments if the client in is unable to do their own occupation um, for two to five years, depending on which rider you choose, uh, or unable to do a comparable occupation up to, all the way up to age 65 uh, after that initial two or five year period. At age 65, we will consider the contract paid up and all premiums will stop and, and the contract will be fully paid up. Okay, so very strong rider and, um, and again, a great way to not only waive the cost but actually fund money into the paid up additions rider. So let's take a quick look at a case study here. And we have um, a male, age 45, preferred non-tobacco, $1 million face amount. And this just shows the enhancements versus the covenant too. 
So you can see the premium is actually $100 cheaper on the horizon value. The year 20 dividend, so just the dividend in year 20 is up by almost 100 and, and about 130 percent higher from 6,000 to 16,700. The increase in year 20 cash value goes from 28,000 for the covenant to 40,500 for a difference of 12,500 almost in increase in cash value in that one year. The total cash surrender value increases by over $82,000. So you can see the impact of that dividend. Now this dividend is also buying additional death benefit if, if you use it as uh, uh, to buy paid up additions. Um, of course there's two ways to buy paid up additions. One is through premium and the other is with dividend. So if we take that into account, your death benefit by year 20 is almost $150,000 higher. So a significant difference. Now, another case design involves a male age 45, preferred non-tobacco, and this is a maximum accumulation case. So we're looking to um, <clears throat> maximize the cash value growth for a given premium amount now. And so the premium will be the same here. The dividend is twice as high at, in your, by year 20 at $2,813. The year 20 cash value increase is higher by 3300 almost $3,400 in that one year, that increase in that one year uh, uh, of the cash value. The total cash surrender value is over $25,000 higher for our maximum accumulation uh, scenario. And the death benefit by year 20 is almost $49,000 higher as a result of those dividends buying more paid up additions. So again, a rising tide lifts all boats. We've improved the cash value growth across the board. We've improved the death benefit per dollar premium. We improved the flexibility of the paid up additions riders, and we've done this all while maintaining our industry leading liquidity, access, and control, which is very important for concepts like the infinite banking concept or college planning, or for individuals and businesses who just want to be able to access cash value uh, when they need it. And that is what we are well known for, and we didn't want to jeopardize that. The product is approved in all states except for California, D.C., Delaware, and Florida. Delaware, I believe, has just been approved, and Florida is close behind. Not sure about California or D.C. All applications coming in now are already in-house are, are approved for the new product. Uh, or I'm sorry, we'll get the new product we're approved. And for those products that come from states where the horizon value is not approved, like California and D.C., they will still receive that new enhanced dividend scale, which is the real big winner in this new version of the product. They just wouldn't receive the ability to fund the paid-up additions rider to age 90. Okay, so we're already, even for policies that have been in-house, we can make that change um, if they've been in-house since June. So, um, so if you have any cases that have come in, uh, let us know, and we can talk about uh, converting that to the new horizon value. So my action request here is have us illustrate a case. Um, contact Marcus, uh, contact I'm, um, and give us a shot. Take a look at uh, Mutual Trust. If you've looked at us in the past, it's a great time to look again. And, um, and uh, you know, because we have a lot of great things going on, uh, a lot of positive movements, as you can see. So our 800 number for our sales development team is 800-323-7320. Our extension is 5140. And our sales development email address is salesdevelopment at mutualtrust.com. This, this is a very knowledgeable group of individuals, with each with more than 10 years of experience in developing whole life cases that you can close and give you a great chance to make that sale. So. Um, and if you're not contracting yet with Mutual Trust, I encourage you to get with on and discuss contracting with them. Uh, and Marcus, that's all I have. I'm happy to answer any questions. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and uh, open it up to questions. If you have questions, go ahead and uh, type them out there. I'll have Kip go ahead and answer any questions you guys have. Um, if you have questions for us, our number here is 800-255-5055. Sandy, Mark, TJ, or myself would be more than happy to answer those for you as well. Um, uh, let me take a look here. 
One question that came in is, do you guys have anything to offer down in Florida at this point in time, Kip? Or have you heard of anything? All of our other products. Yeah, all of our other products are approved. And uh, again, since the um, <clears throat> Horizon Value isn't yet approved in Florida, if an application comes in and it's still not approved by the time we get everything processed, they would still receive the uh, enhanced dividend scale. Therefore, they would get that much stronger cash value. Um, and so, yes, we all of our other products are approved. We have the Economax, which is, which is a whole life term blend. And I um, encourage you to take a look at that. Maybe we could do some sales ideas around that in the future. Uh, we also have a single premium whole life product called uh, Legacy One. And then, of course, we have the Covenant Two and soon to be the Rise in Value. So, yes, we do have all of those available in Florida. Okay. And I have another question that came in. Uh, as far as living benefits, uh, do you guys offer living benefits on these products as well? And while Kip goes ahead and know. answers that, I'm going to launch one other question as far as do you want some uh, or would you like some additional information on contracting for uh, mutual trust at this point in time? And I'll follow up uh, with everyone that would like information on that after the webinar this morning. So go ahead and answer that if you would, Kip. Okay, great. Um, yes, we do. We uh, A couple years ago, we launched a chronic illness rider, and it is issued on all policies all whole life policies, our Horizon Value, Covenant 2, and Legacy 1, uh, up to Table 4 automatically and free of charge. There's no additional charge. It allows the client, the insured, to accelerate the death benefit up to 24% of the full face amount, up to a face amount of $1 million. Uh, now, you can qualify for this rider by being certified by your own physician, the client's own physician, that they're unable to do two of the activities of daily living or if they suffer from severe cognitive impairment. Once they qualify, that's all they need to do for that year. They will receive the benefit. They can elect how much they receive within certain amounts. I believe the minimum is 5% up to a maximum of 24% of the full face amount. Um, so, if, for example, if their face amount was $1 million, and if they're an older client, they're going to receive substantially all of that um, acceleration or $240,000. Uh, the cost comes in as an actuarial adjustment down, especially for younger clients. If they uh, uh, need to accelerate the death benefit due to a, uh, to a chronic illness, the actuarial adjustment down will be a little more substantial for them. But there's no premium for this rider. It's just taken... Uh, as an actuarial adjustment. This money goes to the client income tax free. We don't need to see any receipts and they just need to reapply each year. The, the benefit can be paid out in a lump sum or quarterly or monthly, uh, however they prefer. And so yes, this is, a, this is a great rider for those who are concerned about paying the average $2,500 premium for a long-term care uh, policy, standalone policy, and you know, not receiving that benefit if they make those payments for 10 years or more. Um, so, uh, you know, long-term care policies have um, gone through a lot of turmoil, and these linked benefits have become uh, quite popular. And so, our our answer to that so far has been this chronic illness rider. Uh, it it is not underwritten for. There is no underwriting for the chronic illness rider. So, if somebody would maybe not qualify for a long-term care rider. Uh, this may, again, be a, a good option for them. So good question. Thank you very much. Next question is, um, how far back can they convert a issued covenant to, to a Horizon contract? Or is that allowed? It is. Um, it, as far as conversion goes, um, we are looking at compensation for that and how we're going to do, how we're going to, uh, to, to take care of that. So, it is allowed. There would be underwriting required if the policy was issued prior to June 1st. Um, after June 1st, they can do uh, a reissue of the policy. Uh, so that wouldn't require any additional underwriting. But again, going back to those policies that have been in force for a longer period of time, um, we are working on how we're going to compensate for that. Um, we encourage, your, uh, encourage you to, um, you know, maybe look at your, if you have a policy, one of those policies in force, you can do a, an enforced run on the policy and then get a quote 
for a new uh, horizon value and compare those values and see if it's beneficial for the client to make that conversion. And then we can talk about doing that. Um, got a question out here. Have you compared your product or the newest product uh, against uh, cash value IUL products to see how it compares for people that are looking to pull cash value out uh, for retirement income? Sure. Well, IULs, we um, we think that they, they're kind of a different um, type of – they follow a different spot on the risk-reward curve. Mm -hmm. um, they're fantastic for getting higher rates of return in the later years. So we can never illustrate that potential because we can't illustrate uh, a return on the index um, based on a you know, look back on a 15-year average on the index like IUL can. Um, so so our cash values are going to show lower. Um, what will happen in reality is probably within a one or two percentage point uh, higher result on the IRR for the IUL. And, and, and that's great. And so many times we'll talk to clients about, you know, the level of guarantees they want versus the rate of return they're looking for. And sometimes it can result in a split case. Sometimes you have individuals who are going to go for that higher risk, higher reward, and some who just want those guarantees. And the guarantees in whole life are the stand, gold standard as far as guarantees are concerned. We have no escape hatches. If the client pays the premium, the worst they're going to ever receive is the guaranteed death benefit, the guaranteed cash value, which is is pretty strong. So um, I hope that answers your question. And we see a place for all these products, but we're not going to be able to illustrate a six or seven or eight percent rate of return. Um, and so, from a projection standpoint, um, that's not where we're going to try to compete. Got a question out here on. Um... Have you guys compared your product against other mutual companies like uh, Mass Mutual or, or uh, uh, NML or New York Life, uh, and how does it compare? Yeah, we're on very competitive scale? with yeah on the dividend scale. Yeah. Um, it's going to be difficult with Mass Mutual. They pay a lot lower compensation than we do. And they are a larger company. Having said that, we will beat them sometimes. And in particular, when you look at certain designs, um, for example, I designed a case on a 10-pay versus Mass Mutual. And the way we designed it, uh, we our guarantees and dividends beat theirs throughout the entire lifetime of the contract. So it really is going to depend. Uh, and uh, you know, um, you know, we're never going to be number one all the time. But we do have a very strong comp commission schedule and um, very strong cash values um, with those early guarantees and that, that, that liquidity. So we're always going to be right in the mix now with this new product as far as those cash values are concerned. Next question says, uh, a couple of the examples that you showed were uh, 45, 49-year-olds. Um, is this product better fit for the 40 to 49 year old marketplace or versus the, the senior marketplace? Well, um, we, we do design our products to be competitive across the board. Um, I do think that for that age group, the, the 40s and early uh, 40s and 50s are maybe particularly strong for us, but um, I would really want to run a case to see where we compare uh, on any given case to really give a good answer on that because again we don't try to focus in any particular risk class or age uh, age uh, group. Um, now for example Ohio National actually decreases their dividend for cases that are less than preferred so if they base their dividend, some of their dividend on the risk class you know if you have a preferred rating you get a higher dividend scale. So we don't do that but um, but uh, I will say that that probably is a strong area for us, that 40s and 50s area. Uh, I'm getting a few different questions out here about the living benefits again. Are they limited to the chronic conditions, or do you have riders for terminal and critical? So the, um, the chronic illness rider is a uh, provision of the accelerated death benefit. So it's part of the accelerated death benefit. 
that means that um, the, the client can qualify to accelerate the death benefit under two different provisions, the chronic illness rider for the inability to, to, to do two ADLs or cognitive impairment, or diagnosis of terminal illness that will result in the client's death within a year. So those are the two ways to qualify. And the second one uh, uh, is pretty typical. It accelerates the death benefit up to 50%, uh, up to a maximum of $250,000, or half the face amount, whichever is less. And tied to that, Kip, uh, they're wondering if the um, chronic illness does not require the word including permanent. Is it permanently disabled or permanently? Yeah, at that time, it, at the time, it would be, um, it would need to be in the certification by the doctor that it appears to be a permanent condition. Permanent. Okay. Right. And However, it, if they do if they do recover, they don't lose the ability to requalify later. So a lot of companies would uh, take that ability away. But if they if they are certified as being permanently, you know, unable to do two of the ADLs or permanently cognitively impaired, uh, and they recover, they can then use it again later if they need to. Okay. And it's 24%. I got a question out here. Is it 24% of the million dollars is the annual limit? Right. So, for example, if their face amount, their total face amount is $500,000, the maximum would be 24% of the $500,000. And then they would they would use that same face amount every year. It's not 24% of a lesser face amount in each subsequent year. It would be 24% of $500,000 for years one, two, three, and four. Okay. I got. It looks like two other questions here. Do you have okay. Do you have term insurance with chronic illness that is guaranteed convertible to permanent with chronic illness riders? No, that's a great question. Um, we have a term uh, product called Select Term. It's been very competitive, especially our 15 year lately is actually popping up there in the rankings. Um, you can convert it guaranteed to the horizon value or any of our products or other whole life products. However, it does not have a chronic illness acceleration on it. Uh, it only has the terminal illness acceleration provision. Okay. And it looks like uh, uh, it says I'm, uh, I was a little late getting into the webinar here, but uh, what are the ratings of mutual trust with AM Best and other rating services? Uh, I appreciate yeah, good question. I um I will answer that, and then I want to go back to that question I just answered okay. because uh, I think I need to sure. talk about that a little more. Um, our ratings are we're A rated by AM Best. We uh, during the presentation early on, I just mentioned that we were up upgraded by AM Best about two weeks ago, so we're very happy about that. Uh, we have an A rating with AM Best, an A rating by Fitch, and an A rating with Standard and Poor's. So thanks for that question. And going back to um, conversion on the term going over to the to the uh, horizon value, you know, that policy is automatically issued with a chronic illness rider. So I think I may have misspoke, and I'm going to actually look into that. I don't see any reason why the term couldn't be converted and have the horizon, has, with, to the horizon value and, and not have that chronic illness rider. So I think that I misspoke there. The term would not have the chronic illness rider, but the conversion most likely would. And so if you want to uh, provide Marcus or me with your yeah, contact information. I can make sure I get back to both Marcus and and you and and, and confirm that answer. But uh, great question. Looks like that's uh, all the questions we or I have uh, this morning. Kip, I want to thank you for taking time out uh, to spend some time with us this morning. Uh, if anyone has any additional questions, uh, the sales team at Mutual Trust obviously can be called at the 800-323-7320 number, uh, extension 5140, or you can reach us here at 1-800-255-5055 and either speak to Mark, Sandy, TJ, or myself. Again, my name's Marcus. My last name is Solar. S is in Sam, O-L-L-E-R. Again, Kip and I do appreciate you taking time uh, to listen in this morning, and I will look forward to speaking to each and every one of you.
after the uh, webinar this morning. Anything else for us, Kip? That's it. I just really appreciate you having me again on your call, and I appreciate everybody's time and, and great questions. So thank you, and happy selling. All right. Thank you. Have a good day.